Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'll be taking a look at Flight Simulator. So I'll be using the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Ti. And for what I've seen, it's meant to perform a bit better than the RTX 3090 in this title specifically, but we'll have to see if that's the case. Just going to quickly go through the in-game settings now. So playing at a resolution of 3840 by 2160. Uh, rendering scaling is exactly what it is, so 100% is native. If you go any higher than that, uh, you're scaling a resolution. No and no vsync, so I can un uncap frame rate. I'm using DirectX 11 over DirectX 12 because DirectX 12 is still in beta, and not only that, with my CPU specifically, Ryzen 9 5950X, it just makes the experience more choppy and actually reduces performance, so it's not a fair trade off. Now, global rendering quality is only gone to customs because I've gone into the settings and pushed them all to maximum. So TAA is the anti-aliasing method. Things like terrain level of detail wouldn't generally be at 400. You have to move that side of yourself. So everything is maxed out as you can see. Um, I'm just going to make sure the terrain shadows is the highest in terms of the memory, which is 2048. And uh, that is pretty much it. So let's see how Flight Simulator performs. So this is just a discovery flight. We are in Brazil, uh, Rio de Janeiro to be exact. And um, yeah, let's look at that. I think it's a sunrise rather than a sunset. And it just looks awesome. Just the way they've done the light model in Flight Simulator um, is really, really well done. So you can see to your left there is the Christ Redeemer. It's always looked a lot bigger in movies, but um, I guess the games try to scale it as well as they can. The accuracy of um, some of the real world sites are pretty astonishing. You can even fly over your own home in most situations, but there's the Christ Redeemer here. That actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna go around here and just take another look at it. So I'm no expert when it comes to flight simulator, operating massive Boeing jets and um, passenger flights. It's not really my thing. I'll probably end up crashing or, you know, struggling to uh, keep it in the air properly. So these discovery flights are quite, just set it and forget it. Easy, you can just enjoy the sights. And for me personally, I can see how um, it performs and you know, getting around 40 to 50 frames per second. This isn't really anything that I haven't experienced before on my overclocked RTX 3090 Aorus Extreme. So in some benchmarks, I've seen like a considerable improvement. Maybe that's in specific scenarios, but in, in this situation, at least, I can't see a massive improvement. I'll have to go back and see my previous video to see um, what kind of performance I was getting. But, you know, it's still relatively smooth. This is the Sugarloaf Mountain. Rio de Janeiro has got a lot of mountains, it seems. A lot of, like, islands as well. So I wonder why it's called Sugarloaf. There's actually buildings at the very top of the mountain. That must suck to get up and down there. Hopefully, they've made it easier. Well, it looks like a cave or something. As you can see, sun seems to be rising. Yeah, so it was wasn't the sunset. But Brazil's got some amazing beaches. Let's look how long this strip of beaches. In England, we've got things like Margate that are always jam packed. You can barely find a a space to sit down. But in Brazil, they're just like spoiled with the amount of beaches they have. Big layer of fog there, just coating the lower ground and where the light catches it. That's actually a pretty cool effect. So there's some more um, points in the distance that I interest. So there's the Santos Dome out. That's obviously an airport. I wonder what's over here. I'm going to go into the cockpit view now. So you guys can have a look around. The level of detail they've got on the, uh, the instruments. Even the carpet 
is uh, shouldn't be overstated because they want pilots who actually do hours in these simulators to be familiar with the instruments when they're in the real plane. So I guess they really got to take the time to make sure everything looks to scale and, and um, you know, really, really decent replicas. So in the cockpit, you can actually see performance drop or depending on if you're looking straight forward, it's more, I would say it's more of the same would be a more fair assessment. So there's the Metropolitan Cathedral of Rio de Janeiro. That looks pretty cool. Never been to Brazil myself. Rio de Janeiro. It's huge though. The way that the they even put in like moving cars and things below, that's really really good. With uh, flying games, it's always interesting how they try to make some of the stuff on the ground look realistic because they focus mainly on the planes, which is rightly so. But they've done a good job here. Done a really good job. So you're not going to be hitting 60 frames per second, obviously. That is definitely not going to be happening. But it's still a very, very smooth experience. And I think that's one of the most important things. Let's head off into the distance now. I think I saw a few more points of interest. So actually observing the CPU usage, very, very low. Not common when you're at 4K and things are more GPU bound, but even so, thread utilization doesn't seem to be more than six cores at least. So hopefully they complete their testing with DirectX 12 and get better utilization because it is bottlenecked, but it's definitely got better since the flight simulator um, release so they've improved a lot but there's still more work to be done we're back into the cockpit view now and all the instruments are fully working and then if you can touch every individual button which it looks like you can which is an amazing attention to detail don't know what any of these things mean but uh I'm sure if there's a pilot watching, they probably find this amusing and they certainly know what, I, what they're looking at. I wonder if there's ever been a situation where flight simulators actually save someone's life. Like no one, someone with no real world hours of flying any plane, but they've spent hours and hours and hours on a simulator and they were in a situation where they were able to safely land a plane or, or something of of that sort or provide assistance in any way just from the experience of virtual hours. That would be an interesting um, situation if that's actually happened. Maybe it probably has if you looked into it. Probably worth looking into. It's like a football stadium down below. So there's something off into the distance over here. I'm not too sure what it is. You have to get a bit closer before you actually get the information. So we've got the Campo de la Jardim de Matos. Hopefully that came out right. I don't speak Portuguese. I don't know what that is though. Maybe it's uh, another airstrip or something. I'm gonna fly over it though and see what it looks like. So it seems to be quite demanding around here, getting around 45 FPS. I 
I don't know, this looks awesome. A few frame spikes here and there. But generally the experience has been pretty smooth. Yeah, so it's just another nair strip. Nothing too interesting. Peer to the right now, see what else we can find. Go lower to the ground. Just to gaze on the ground model a bit. And the closer you are to the floor as well, the more demanding the game is. Co pilot. And leave the flight whenever you want. Yeah, that's fine. Still enjoying the sights. So there's the Orlinda. I don't know what that is. Let's go and check it out. Wish that sign would disappear. Doesn't seem to want to go away. There's Eden to the right. I don't know what that is. Or Eden. Oh, Linda. Maybe it's a train station, I'm not too sure. It looks like there's a railway track below. Possibly a train station. Must be a big one. I'll have a look at what this Eden is. So, Matthias. Power draw is pretty high in this game, as you can see. Pulling around 460 watts at times, as you saw just there. So you can tell it's not going to go easy on your GPU. Even so, uh, the tough RTX Retina IT ASUS OC still doing a great job keeping temps in check. Anyway guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. That was just a quick look at Flight Simulator. Looking good, as always, and performs reasonably well. Nothing surprising though. I'll have to go back and look at some previous gameplay to see how it compares to my previous 3090, but even so, um, still performs okay. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.